On this worksheet, we're going to go through a few different types of problems where we're predicting the change in entropy for different types of systems or reactions. In the first problem, we're going to be looking at chemical reactions, predicting whether the change in entropy is positive or negative. As a reminder, a positive change in entropy meanings, means that the reaction or the system is getting more random, it's getting more disordered. A uh, negative change in entropy would mean that the system is getting more ordered or less random. One of the ways that we can predict whether a system is becoming more random or more ordered is by simply looking at the number of reactants and products in the, in the reaction. So if a reaction has two different types of molecules that are reacting and producing only one, producing less than that, the process is becoming more, more ordered. I circled the wrong one, more ordered. And so this would be a delta S that is negative or less than zero because it's becoming more random. So again, this is where we are going from two molecules, two types of molecules down to only one type of molecule. When we're decreasing the number of molecules, the system is becoming more ordered. Another way that we can tell if a system is becoming random, more random or more ordered is by looking at the state of matter of our reactants and products. So in this reaction down here, we have a liquid and a solid, and then in our products, we have a gas and a solid. Gases are more random than liquids or solids, so this system is becoming more random, meaning that it has a positive value of delta S. And again, this is because it is producing a gas. Anytime you are going up in the state of matter, so changing from a solid to a liquid or changing from a liquid to a gas, you're always going to be getting a positive value of delta S. And this particular system, we're creating a solution, which is impure. And this also results in more randomness. So this is a positive delta S. So this would be uh, an example of going from something that is pure into something that is a mixture or a solution. Let's look at a couple of examples of changes that we can make to gases that don't have to do with chemical reactions, just changing temperature or volume or things like that. So here we have a gas that's being held at constant volume and we're heating it up. What does that do to the sign uh, or what does that mean for the sign of delta S? So the delta S is going to be a positive number anytime we are heating anything, whether it's a gas or a solid or a liquid. Anytime we're heating it up, it's going to have increase its entropy. Uh, anytime we're cooling it down, it is going to have a negative change in entropy. And this is just because as we're heating stuff up, um, they're moving around, the molecules are moving around a little faster, they have the ability to be a little bit more chaotic, a little bit more random. So since we're heating, we've got a positive delta S, and in the next problem it's asking about cooling, that's going to be a negative delta S. Uh, next two questions ask about changing the volume of a gas, if we're compressing the gas versus if we're expanding the gas. If we're compressing the gas and we're bringing those molecules closer together, eventually we're going to get to a point where the gas molecules turn into a liquid. That's definitely going to decrease the randomness, uh, so we're going to have a negative delta S. What about if we're expanding it? If we're expanding it, we're going to have the opposite taking place, a positive delta S. Uh, now we want to consider doing more than one thing at once. So we have a gas that is being heated. Remember, anytime you're heating, that means that you have a positive delta S, and we're also expanding it, and expanding causes a positive delta S. So these two different conditions work together. Overall, positive change in entropy. What about if we're cooling it down? Anytime we cool anything down, it's a negative delta S, and we're also compressing it, so that would also be a negative delta S. Those two things work together, and the process overall is gonna be negative. Now what about if we heat it up, which is a positive delta S, but we compress it, that compression would be a negative delta S. Uh, in that situation, we don't know what it is. We can't predict it. It really depends on how much we're heating it versus how much we're compressing it. And that would be something that we would need to calculate instead of predict. What about if we're cooling it down? So if we're cooling it down, we're gonna have a negative delta S, but we're expanding it. That would be a positive delta S. And this is another situation where it can't be predicted. We would have to calculate it. 
So let's take all of that information from the last few problems that we just did and like kind of create a table that we could use to help us with all of these types of questions. So whenever we're cooling something down, that means that we have a negative delta S. And whenever we're heating something up, that means that we have a positive delta S. And when there's no change to volume, cooling something down with no change to volume, negative delta S. If we're heating something up with no change to volume, that's a positive delta S. Now let's think about these two variables over here. If we're compressing something that is going to be a negative delta S, bringing those molecules closer together, getting them to the liquid state. If we're expanding it, that would be positive delta S. So if we're compressing or expanding with no change to temperature, the compression is going to be a negative delta S, and an expansion is going to be a positive delta S. If we're compressing and also cooling, both of those together contribute to a negative delta S. If we are expanding and heating, both of those together gives us a positive delta S. If we are compressing and heating, we've got one that is negative and the other that is positive, so this is something that we can't predict. If we are expanding and cooling, they are giving us different, you know, different types of changes, so we also can't predict that. If we're not doing anything to the volume or the temperature of a gas, then we won't be doing anything to its entropy either. So that would be a delta S of zero. And then let's apply this to a few examples. So here we have helium gas that is being heated. So that's going to be a positive delta S greater than zero. Uh, at constant volume, uh, oh, I guess that's it. So delta S is greater than zero. Now we have a gas that is condensing to a liquid. So we're going from a gas to a liquid. That decreases the entropy. So that's going to be a negative delta S. Here we have a gas that is being heated. So that's a positive delta S. And it's also being expanded, which is negative delta or positive delta S. So those two together, both positive delta S. Uh, we've got two more. These have to do with mixtures and solutions. Whenever we are making a mixture of two things, it's going to be a positive delta S. So if we are making a mixture, delta S is going to be greater than zero. And that's the case um, in, this, in this particular problem. If we are diluting or adding to the mixture, which is literally what we're doing here, the delta S is going to be greater than zero, delta S is going to be positive. Um, if we are down here, if we are diluting, diluting, delta S is going to be greater than zero.